Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back. So one of the most important thing that I've said in my previous video when I told you you can learn DevOps faster is to get things done, right? Or implement something. What I'm going to show you in this video is a sample project that you can easily get it done. And this is not for people who are already in DevOps or who know DevOps. This is not an advanced project, but a very beginner friendly project for those people who are getting into DevOps or starting DevOps now. By end of this project, you will know how to configure DNS and point that to a web service, how to set up a GCP or AWS account. You will know how to write infrastructure as a code, use Ansible for configuration management, and then host everything in a compute engine in the cloud. And then the most important concept is you will know how to implement CI CD with GitHub Actions. So this will be a very good project for beginners who wants to learn DevOps faster. And then you will have an amazing website for yourself end of this project. So let's go through the steps. If you have any questions, you can put it in the comment section here, or you can also reach out to me in the Discord channel that is there in the description. All right, folks. So now let's get started with the steps that you have to perform. Like I've said, write these down on your uh, diary or notebook or wherever you want, or even in your computer, and then make sure that you want to complete these tasks in a time frame that you want to set for yourself. First step is purchase a domain, purchase a domain. Pardon me for my bad writing. When you're purchasing a domain, you can go for .com or .net or anything, .io, create a brand for yourself. Like I have cloudadvocate.net. This would cost you around $8 if you're doing it from US or $10. If you're doing it from India, it's gonna be 800 rupees or you know 900 rupees. And then the important thing to check here, after the first year, they might have higher charges during the auto renewal or renewal. So make sure of checking that before you would proceed for auto renewal or whether you really want to do a renewal. Because let's say if you want to do just for this demo, you can just have it for one year and then end this demo, and rather end this domain. And also make sure that you check the who is privacy. You know, important thing here for your privacy who is privacy so that nobody's going to know what, what is your address, home address and all the other things that you're going to give while you're registering a domain. The second thing is, this is where the fun starts, creating GitHub account. When you create a GitHub, GitHub account, create two repositories. One, let's say one for IAC code that will have both Terraform code and Ansible code. And then the second one is going to be for your static website code. Two simple steps. You will have a sense of accomplishment that you have done two amazing things. Now moving on, the third step here is create a cloud account. If you want to use AWS, AWS is fine or GCP, absolutely fine, or Azure, whatever you want, but I would suggest, I highly recommend using only these three clouds when you're creating a cloud account. And then once you create the cloud account, the subtask for this is creation of a compute resource. And a compute resource here ideally is um, a virtual machine. Uh, for the virtual machine, you can, if you're using AWS, you're going to create an EC2 instance. If you're using GCP, you're going to create a compute engine. I'm not much familiar with Azure, as you all know, so um, whatever that Azure resource is going to be. Uh, if you've completed third step, done amazing stuff here so far. After you've created any one of these resource in their respective clouds manually, automate this using Terraform. And commit this code to the GitHub account that you've created, GitHub repository that you've created in the previous step. Commit the code or push the code to uh, the repository. And one important security recommendation here is never store secrets into the GitHub project or repository. Okay, make sure 
you're following this security recommendation and also find any other way of storing those access keys or secret keys that you might have hard coded inside Terraform files. And another important thing is also that you can, while you're learning Terraform, you'll learn about a state file. You can either store the state file, store the state file locally or in the remote. This is like a very, very important thing. If you can get this done, then uh, you got one important interview question that will be asked for Terraform. So moving on, the next thing is setting up DNS using Terraform. So after you have done the above steps, you will have an IP address that you get for your compute engine, right? Or, or uh, the compute resource. Now point that to your website. Use Terraform to get this done. And then again, push this code. Four steps are done. Now fifth step is configuring your uh, virtual machine. So to configure virtual machine, you can use Ansible as a configuration management tool. So what we want to configure here is a web server because obviously you want to host your static files in a web server. So configure and install Nginx or Apache, whatever web service of your choice, web server of your choice. The choice of the web server really doesn't matter here. The important thing is how you want to use Ansible playbooks to automate that. And then once that is installed, push the Ansible code to Git. So another important security recommendation here is get a TLS certificate and configure to your web server and also know what item potency means. Now let's move on to the sixth one. So this is a relatively easy step for people who know how to write basic static content or, you know, static code, go to any website or W3 schools or anywhere like Hugo, but the choice is yours. Get some sample static web website code. Now here, uh, one recommendation is that if you want to host your website to show yourself as, uh, or, or show your resume, there are also very good resume templates that you can use. Now seventh step is the step that I love most, which is automating the whole thing. Once you commit this code, commit the code to another GitHub repository, to GitHub uh, repo. For each push to a main branch, it should automatically trigger a GitHub action. So here you will know how to implement CI CD using GitHub action. So that should trigger Ansible. Okay. And deploy the code. I'm writing like a doctor here. Deploy the code to the website. That's it. If you do all these things unknowingly, you will be learning a lot of amazing stuff in DevOps because eventually you will be running into issues. You will do some research in Google, how to use Ansible playbooks, or you might use even chat GPT to get the sample code. Again, I would leave it up to you to do your own research. My suggestion is don't use chat GPT or BART here because in big enterprises, they're not yet enabled. So if you want to have the real experience, then use only Google and use Stack Overflow to get the stuff done or to debug issues that are happening while you are doing this project. And uh, so that's pretty much it. So once you are done, you can definitely put some cool stuff, okay, uh, in, in your resume. But unfortunately, there is no Kubernetes or containers here, or there is no load balancing here, which is also important, but that you can use in, in, in the advanced project once you are confident with this. If you watched till this far, subscribing to my channel, 
would be an amazing thing. Thank you all again for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. You can also reach out to me on my Discord channel that I, that I have in the description. Thank you all. Bye.